Hey everyone, I just arrived in Wilmington, Delaware, and like I always do when I'm in a new city, I'm starting off at the local market. So this is the Chancery Market, and behind me you could see Kati Roll Walla. So I did not know what a Kati Roll is. I sort of know the ingredients, but I ordered the chicken tikka one. So there's roti on the outside, then there's a layer of egg on the inside, and then there's is cilantro sauce, and then getting a little bit closer, you can see the chicken tikka. So I'm told this place is a small franchise. It's also in, started in New Jersey. It's also in Houston, Texas. And they also gave me some samosa bites to sample with a tamarind sauce and also with a cilantro sauce. I believe it's the same cilantro sauce that's in here. So in my opinion, you can't go wrong with chicken tikka. Uh, just an observation, the bread is not crispy like I'm used to roti being. Uh, maybe the, uh, the egg has something to do with it. But I love the cilantro sauce. Um, whenever I go to an Indian restaurant and I get takeout, I always get an extra one to take home with me. But they also do other things at this place. Like this is a protein bowl, which is also with chicken tikka. It's got a yogurt, it's got a tamarind sauce. So um, they have quite a bit of variety for such a small stall in this little market here. The Delaware Historical Society is really three museums in one. It's Old Town Hall, the Mitchell Center for African American History, and also the Delaware History Museum. So it's two floors and there's also the adjacent Old Town Hall. The museum starts with local history that dates back before the Europeans arrived in the 1630s. It also has exhibits on farming and then goes on to explain when Delaware became industrialized, the Port of Wilmington, and then also when it became a tourist destination. These are the postcards, Rehoboth, Dewey Beach, which are still two of the top attractions in the first state. The Mitchell Center for African American Heritage is also on the first floor. Here they have exhibits on slave history in Delaware. And then they also have a really cool exhibit in the back, which is about music, African Americans, and the arts. And it gives you a little bit of history about which musicians came from Delaware, some of the albums they released. So if you're traveling from another city in the Northeast, chances are you might arrive in Wilmington by train. So this is the Acela Express, and Wilmington is one of a select number of Acela Express stops between Boston and Washington, D.C. Uh, it stops in Baltimore, Philly, New Haven, New York, Newark, but Providence as well, but only the main cities along that route. All right, so I'm at the Riverfront Market, which is conveniently located near the Amtrak station. It's also uh, located near the Riverwalk. And this market here has a Thai place. I believe you say uh, Jean Wong, is that right? Yeah, Jean Wong. Okay, so Jean Wong Thai Cuisine, um, I just met the owner and uh, you were nice enough to come and sit with me after, of course, I ordered this uh, special duck noodle soup, right? Yeah, duck noodle soup. Okay. That's one. So, uh, first I have to ask you, Kun Chi Arai Ka? Chu Saji Ka, Sawadi Ka. Saji Yindi Ti Dai Ru Ja Ka. Yindi Chen Gan Ka, Yindi Ti Dai Ru Ja Ka. Okay, so I got the duck noodle soup because I like it. I got it because it's on special. But what are some other dishes that we should try here at Jin Wung? Uh, we do, you mean like special dish? Anything like, like if somebody's coming for the first time like uh, me. Yeah, uh, almost they order the Pad Thai. It's special. We, uh, we do like different kind of people in the Thai restaurant doing like Cap meat, fried rice, shrimp, and cap meat, fried rice. That's okay. uh, amazing for we do that only one in Wilmington. Okay, yeah, that's great because we're uh, in crab country, I guess. We're, you know, yeah. we're in Delaware, which is next to Maryland, which is known for the crab. Yeah. And um, also, I saw that you had something similar to Gui Tiao Kua Gai, but on the menu, you call it, is it Pad Kimao? Pad Kimao, yeah. Some kind of similar, like, look like Gui uh, Tiao Kua Gai, yeah. That's the original, like, noodle like a fried noodle with chicken but here we do like pad kimao we do uh 
Yeah, the same kind, but different little bit. Like we do like flavor spicy. Yeah, with your cook guy, like not spicy. Yeah, my pet, my, my pet. My pet, yeah. Okay, well, I am gonna try this duck noodle soup, and sure, I'm yeah. gonna say like uh, thank you for your time. Kapun mak mak ka. Ah, yindi ka, yindi ka. All right, lagon. Kapun ka. So I really got lucky today. This market only has about six or seven stalls, and two of them are two of my three favorite foods in the world. I just had Thai duck noodle soup uh, from the vendor down here, and now I'm with Juliana at Pachamama, and I got uh, yuca frita, and I got the, uh, is this pollo a la brasa? Yeah. Okay, so um, before I even try this, I wanna ask you, why is Peruvian chicken better than any other chicken? At least Peruvian roasted chicken. Was the way how we marinate the chicken. We, we use it, our ingredients is imported from Peru. We, we marinate the chicken uh, for 24 hours. Then we cook it in the roaster oven. And we give it like a, a smoked flavor. The other thing is the way how we marinate the chicken too. It's go underneath the skin, inside the chicken. You rub it really nice outside. So it's like a, the, the, the heart we put on the, on the chicken. Right, because even if you eat the chicken without the skin, it still has flavor. Yes. We, and by the way, you included two sauces, which I rarely use. This is her... Uh, this is ají amarillo or ají yeah. pollera. It's a, we use, also, we use imported peppers. So okay. this is mild, mild sauce, and the other one's ricotto. Ricotto is like a type of uh, habanero, but it's more spicy. It's like a tapayoli, so it's really good and spicy. Though. Is it strange that I usually just eat the chicken with no sauce because I like the flavor? Oh, the chicken is so good. Some people say, oh, we don't want it. Uh, the sauce is so good. So, but at the same time, they want to use it like a dipping for your size, you know, like your yuca or fries. So, by the way, what does Pachamama mean? Oh, Pachamama is like a mother earth. Mother there's, earth. Um, they, there's an um, Inca's uh, uh, language, the original language from Peru was the Quechua. So this too, that's why we call Pachamama the place, because everything we make here is made uh, uh, from starch. It's homemade, everything is fresh. All the, all the, again, the in, ingredients is exported from Peru. Okay, so I think it's time I try the chicken. Okay, enjoy, you wanna love your chicken. Thank okay, you. let's find out. Now again, I don't think you, sorry, I don't think you really need sauce for this. Now I don't expect you to give up your trade secret, but what, can you just name like one ingredient that's really important in the marinade for the chicken? Oh, we bring some um, Peruvian peppers from Peru. And also we put like a salt and pepper, is the base for everything. And that's what makes it uh, nice and crispy on the skin. Yes, yeah, I yeah, took some skin with we that. We use some beer too for the marinade. Beer like, like cerveza? Black, yes, cerveza negra, black beer. And a little bit of the wine. Okay. For All me, right. kitchen is not is no any secret, the owner, you know? It's like the love of how much you put your heart, everything you make on the, on the, on the when you cook. I think it's the key of the ingredients and the, the right. secret for the, for the dishes. All right, well, again, if you ever come to this, uh, if you ever come to Wilmington, if you arrive by Amtrak, you could walk here. You could also park here for two hours. And you definitely have to try the Thai. They're both on the same side. You gotta try the Thai place and you gotta try Pachamama. Thank you, yes, stop in to Pachamama. Okay, de nada. So I asked the owner of Jean Wong at the Riverfront Market where you can get some of the ingredients for some of my favorite Thai dishes. And she pointed me towards the Asia supermarket, which is about a 20 minute drive from the market and from the Hyatt. And here's where you can get ingredients to make uh, some of my favorite Southeast Asian dishes. You can get things here like banana flour. You can get green papaya to make a papaya salad. And you can also get snacks. I'm actually gonna take these on the road with me. This is tempura seaweed smoked barbecue flavor. So I'm here with Jen from the Greater Wilmington Convention Visitors Bureau. And Jen, I believe we're on the Riverwalk Wilmington. Yep, that's right. Okay, so what is the story behind the Riverwalk here? So they used to build ships here a long time ago. And then I would say probably 30 years ago, they started to redevelop it and it's really taken off over the last 15, 10 years. Now we've got, I'd say, close to 15 restaurants down here. We've got a children's museum and this lovely river walk that's over seven miles long that leads into historic Newcastle. There's a lot of fun things going on. Oh, and three hotels. Yes, yeah, so we have the Hyatt, uh, which is like you walk out the back of the Hyatt and you're on the river walk. 
And also, uh, there's a crane behind me. Then I'm just gonna turn this way a little bit. You can see the downtown skyline. And you can also walk uh, to hotels like the Hyatt from the Amtrak station. Yep, and there's we also a Westin and a Homewood Suites as well, also walking distance. Okay, great. So about how long is this if you were to go from the Amtrak station to Newcastle? It is just over seven miles one way. Okay, and are there bikes or how do you recommend doing this if you wanna, if you're limited on time and you wanna go from one end to the other? So there are bikes you can rent down here through a system called Finn. You just download the app on your phone. It unlocks the bike, it charges you by the minute um, and you're on your way. You just have to bring your own helmet. Okay, great. Thank you, Jen. You're welcome. Bardea Food and Drink is located in downtown Wilmington along Market Street, which some locals refer to as Restaurant Row. So the chef from this restaurant is a two-time James Beard nominated chef, and there's also a steakhouse next door. Now, I'm trying to do the best of both worlds. I'm at Food and Drink, but I ordered the ribeye because I'm trying to get the steakhouse experience. Uh, just look at the size of this. I'm sure this is enough for two or three people. And um, they have like a little demi-glaze on the top. And I'm going to take a bite and see what this is like. Beautiful Piedmontese ribeye. So it's super tender. You can tell it's a good cut. You don't even need sauce. There's a little bit on the top. But the chef, I'm sorry, the server, made sure that he only put a little bit on. So uh, yeah, this is definitely a good choice here. The historic village of Centerville is just five miles from Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. I'm on the Delaware side of the border and I'm at Buckley's Tavern. So uh, this place is kind of famous for their mushroom soup. So uh, what's really interesting about the mushroom soup is uh, Kennett Square does about half of the mushroom production in the country. I believe it's over 500 million tons or something like that every year of mushrooms to the point where there's a mushroom festival just five miles from where I'm at right now. And Centerville, I, it may technically be part of Wilmington, I believe it's unincorporated, but if you take a look here, um, Buckley's, this is the sign, and then if you look, uh, there's like a really quaint kind of main street, really quiet. Mm. So the soup is not quite what I was expecting. Um, it's not that rich. Uh, when you hear cream, you think it could be on the rich side. This is not. And the mushrooms, they're diced super thin. But if you look, I got a bowl, not that big, and they have a cup which is even smaller. So you should definitely start with that. So I'm here with Susan, who's the director of the Marshall Steam Museum on the outskirts of Wilmington. And they got this really cool museum which is kind of hidden from the nearest road. So Susan, um, you got quite the collection here of gas, steam, and electric. That's true. That's one of our signature uh, distinctions is that we have cars that date back to the st start of the automotive age. And most people are not aware that there was both gas, steam, and electric cars on the road in equal numbers. Yes, so you also have like a one-eighth scale train that you allow people of all ages to ride, is that correct? That's very true. Our, our train rides go back to the 1960s when our founder would, was starting the Wilmington and Western Railroad. Um, we have both uh, steam locomotives and a diesel style, and we host everybody to come out and enjoy a ride on the first Sundays of the month from May through November. May through November. So just taking a look around here, you got quite the collection. It looks like most of this is like, I don't know, pre-World War II. Do I have that right? You're very correct. Yes. In fact, most of it is um, from the teens and the 20s. Okay. And was this part of Mr. Marshall's private collection? It was. It was Clarence Marshall's initially, and he left uh, most of it to his son, who continued to acquire, and we have uh, been gifted a couple of cars as well. Yeah, and you said this uh, building was a former garage, is that right? It was built in 1947 to house the growing collection that Clarence was uh, building. And so essentially it was a garage, but he put a sign on it and called it a museum even then. So no wheels on this Ford right here? Well, I that's just temporary. Um, they're actually getting uh, put on or new, new wheels and tires are being married together. This will, is one of the cars that we give rides in uh, starting in June. And I'm assuming you can't just get those at the local Ford dealer. No, you sort of have to special order and putting them on is a bit of a challenge. So we've outsourced that this year so we can start giving rides as soon as the weather is permissive. 
All right, well, I hope people watching this will come here, and thank you very much, Susan. You're very welcome. So, Susan, uh, I was about to leave, and then I noticed there's a Delaware license plate on this vehicle. There is indeed. Okay, so um, how do you register something like this? Well, it's uh, luckily, because it's an antique auto, it's very easy to register. Um, but we do take the cars out on the road, and virtually all the cars, um, with only one exception, have a current registration. Wow, that's, uh, what is it, like a class? It just, there's nothing special. Is it a classic registration? It technically is an antique auto one, so we renew it by mail each year. You have to go through uh, the DMV once. Once you've done that, as long as you keep it running and operational, you can do it by mail. All right, that's really cool. Thank you. So before I even arrived in Wilmington, I've been hearing about this thing called tomato pie. And I'm at a bakery called Serpy's, as you could read from Dominic's shirt. Um, and Dominic, I was hoping you could explain what tomato pie is for a new, to a New Yorker. Uh, tomato pie goes way back. My father started a business in 1952. You start making the tomato pie, and it's, it's, it sells like wildfire. I mean, uh, it's a cold pie. It, you know, everybody says, uh, I want it hot. But no, tomato pie needs to be eaten cold, room temperature. Very tasty, very enjoyable. There's no cheese, no pepperoni on it. So it's a very healthy too. So I've been standing here for about 20 minutes waiting for new ones to come out. And in, the, in those like 15, 20 minutes, one pie was just gone. Um, I noticed a mix of center slices and end slices. Are the center slices the most popular? Now, believe it or not, uh, we have people in, in both, both, like both, I'm sorry. They like both because some people like it crusty, some people don't like the crust. And what does it taste like for someone who's never had it? Is the bottom crunchy? It's uh, semi-crunchy, a little on the soft side, semi-crunchy, but it's, uh, it's uh, a light dough, and it uh, has tomatoes and all the ingredients, and it's all secret ingredients I put in there. I can't secret ingredients, but I can tell it's, uh, it looks like pizza without the sauce, but I'm sure there's more to it. There's more to it, yes. Okay, all right, well, I'm gonna be getting some and I look forward to trying it. Thank you very much, Dominic. Oh, thank you very much. So here's what the tomato pie actually looks like up close. Mmm. Mmm. So the bottom is crispy. Dominic tells me it's probably gonna stay like that. I know he doesn't give away trade secrets, but I could definitely see tiny, tiny minced pieces of garlic in there. Um, definitely the tomatoes have flavor. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, it's not the same as if you went to a Neapolitan style pizzeria and got marinara because it's, um, it's square. And it's definitely different. It's something you should definitely try when you're in Delaware. So I'm at the Hagley Museum and I'm here with Richard and Richard's gonna explain this stop on the tour. Okay, Brian, what we have here is a water-operated machine shop. So a few minutes ago, we opened up for water, the sluice gate for water to go down from this, uh, this uh, mill race down to the creek. And all we have to do is put a machine between the creek and the mill race, and that's what gives us our power to run our machinery. You'll notice right up here, we've sent powder power from down there via ropes and pulleys to this point outside the building. And when you step into the building, you'll see an inside um, pulley. So the pulleys are running inside and this is one of the demonstrations you could watch at the museum. Correct. Thank you. So Richard, we're about to do a powder demonstration, but first I wanna ask you, why would Northern Delaware be such a good place for a powder factory? Good question. Um, First of all, there was the stone that you see lining the road here. It's also lining the, what we call the mill race, and it's in all of the buildings. We're going to be going into a couple of those buildings here in a second. So there were 32 of these buildings along here, and each pair had a water machine between them. So each water machine, whether it was a, a water wheel in the early 1800s or a water turbine in the middle 1800s, uh, the, the, thing, the mills were built in pairs. Uh, another reason they came here was the beautiful Brandywine River, or Brandywine Creek, as it's more properly called. Uh, and it doesn't have a lot of power, not a lot of power to it. So how do you get the water to do water power? Well, 
you build what's called a mill race, which is this upper body of water. And now when you release this water, all you have to do is put a water machine, a turbine, a water wheel between the mill race and the creek and the rushing water coming down is going to run your machinery for you. All right, that makes more sense. Okay, Richard, so I see that you have it sealed and you have a fuse attached to it. What do you do next? I light it. Okay, do I need to cover my ears? No. Okay, here we go. Wow. Okay, so you see the soot. You see the soot, you see the smoke, you see the bang. That represents half of the power of that explosion. In other words, wasted, okay? Here's the soot, this was my lid, and you'll notice that the wheel pretty much went to about there. Okay. Okay, so it would be more powerful than an explosion that sent it to here. Thank you, Richard. Okay. I'm at Mrs. Rubino's in Wilmington's Little Italy. So I heard about this place through uh, a writer in Philadelphia. And uh, behind me a few minutes ago, there was just somebody here from Brooklyn. So this is one of those restaurants people travel for. Kind of reminds me of a couple places I tried in Atlantic City. Uh, here's the menu. And I'm interested in trying their red sauce. So I got the veal parmesan. Just take a look at the size of that. And then for my side, I got the ravioli, which uh, also came highly recommended. So uh, this is a really just old school place. If you take a look around, um, they have family photos um, on the walls. And then up above my head here, there is a newspaper article, a framed black and white newspaper article from all the way back in 1946. Mm. So the veal is pounded super thin. Uh, it's kind of crispy. I'm guessing it's uh, pan fried. And the sauce also, I want to say something about that. Um, it's not too sweet, it's not too salty. It's just right. I would love to take some of this home. I'm at Green Bank Station on the outskirts of Wilmington. And the train you see behind me is the Wilmington and Western Railway. On weekends, you could do themed train rides like today. They're doing an Easter train ride. It's about a five mile trip through the kind of rural outskirts of Wilmington. So while tomato pie came the most highly recommended in Wilmington, I couldn't come here without trying a grotto pizza. Now trying is not necessarily the right word because Harvey's Lake, Pennsylvania is where grotto pizza started in 1960. That's the county I was born in a few years later, many years later maybe. And uh, so I've been eating this pizza for about a quarter century. So one thing that's unique about Grotto Pizza is the cheese blend. So that's cheddar cheese. It's a mix of aged cheddar and newer cheddar cheese. And the sauce and the cheese, instead of having the cheese on top of the sauce, it's put in a circular uh, shape. So while the grotto locations have a sports bar type of feel, if you do want to eat the pizza at home, you could do what I just did. I ordered mine half baked. So you could see it's the same pizza, just not fully cooked. And you take this home and you heat it at 425. So I got a 12 inch because that's the size of the pizza stone I have at home. And it gets the crust uh, nice and crispy. And uh, this is what I've been doing for probably 25 years and I'm happy to be able to do it in Wilmington. So of all the suggestions I got from Wilmington, two steakhouses came the most highly recommended. One was Bardea, which I had a chance to try the night I got here. I didn't try the steakhouse, but I tried uh, the food and drink spot. But the others is the spot where I'm at now. It's Walter's. So um, the people who did suggest this place suggested that I try the prime rib. So I ordered the 24 ounce, which I'm gonna show you in a second. This has to be two and a half inches thick if you take a look right here. Um, and I was asked something I've never been asked before when it came to prime rib. Um, to be honest, I'm used to getting it at the buffet, but I was asked if I wanted the chuck side or the sirloin side. So I ended up getting the sirloin side, but uh, my test is gonna be, does it need any sauce? Because I said no when they asked if I wanted horseradish or not. Okay. So even the middle part came apart very easy without having to cut it much. 
It's definitely uh, more tender than the prime rib I'm used to. Not that I eat it that often, but it's definitely more tender. The only thing I'm gonna do is sprinkle a tiny bit of salt on the top. But um, other than that, you definitely don't need sauce on this. So when I was in Little Italy, I saw a handful of water ice stops, kind of reminded me of Philly, but I did not go to any of those on this trip. Instead, I drove out to, I believe I'm in Newark. Uh, I'm a little bit outside of Wilmington, but I'm at Woodside Farm Creamery. And this is the place that the most people told me I had to come to. So you can see um, it doesn't take long to get into a rural area when you're leaving Wilmington, and this is no exception really. So if you take a look here, that's the sign, but then off in the distance here, when it's warmer out, you'll start to see cows there. And the cows on this farm are the ones that they use to make the ice cream. So uh, the dairy comes from those cows. I'm trying a few. I'm trying uh, cookie dough, cappuccino crunch, and lemon. We'll see how these are. Okay. So the cookie dough bites are soft and chewy. Um, I also sampled the motor oil, which is the flavor that a few of you recommended. So I tried the motor oil. There are a couple other flavors, including one that kind of mixes all the flavors in one. Um, a couple dozen different flavors here. Um, I'm going to get a pint of the salted caramel to take home with me. Out of all the flavors I've tried, that's been my favorite. Uh, motor oil and butter brick are good as well. But yeah, um, you were right. This place is definitely worth a little detour outside of Wilmington. So my time here in Wilmington has come to an end. I'm at the Amtrak station. I'm gonna say goodbye. If you like this video, please click subscribe. I got more trips coming up like Toronto. I'm uh, gonna be heading back to Maryland again. And I look forward to sharing more videos with you.